Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. Last time we were not still here, but there's something that I forgot to show that I would like to do. But yeah, last time we uh, made our way over to South Figaro after this castle just flat out disappeared and I'm already taking the wrong way. We want to go down one more area. I always end up forgetting which one leads where. But I neglected to show this off an episode or two ago, and I wanted to do it just because there's some unique stuff down here. No items, but uh, some dialogue. And to see Edgar. How do they keep us in this stinking pit? Well, I guess you're in jail, so you get what you cause, I guess? Punishment's got to fit the crime? Stay away from him. So the guy tells me to keep my safe distance. This guy will dick around. Do you ever come down? Uh, ah, get back here. And that's all you have to say. Well, you suck. It's no sense in keeping us here. Now, if you uh, notice here, they've misspelled potatoes. There's supposed to be an E there. But uh, in addition to that, um, you can just kind of see what he's talking about here. There's, uh, compared to the real threat lurking out there, these guys are nothing. I wonder what real threat you could be talking about. Hmm. And most importantly, Lone Wolf the Pickpocket has indeed returned. Uh, he was in Final Fantasy V. Was he in IV? Think so off the top of my head, but anyway, he is back, and I kind of wanted to show off the fact that he was here, even though you can't do anything about it. Um, I wanted to show it because, well, it's going to be not necessarily important, but it's cool to know that he's here now, considering we will see him again later on. Uh, there is one other thing that I actually didn't know about, and I'm gonna advance through some of this stuff off screen and get control of Edgar, and then I will see you in a moment. All right, we're back and we have control of Edgar here by ourselves. Um, you can do this after the first conversation with um, Kefka there. Now, I'm just going to head straight on down here to the cave. Now, one thing of note, um, you'll kind of get a chance to, to hear this a little bit. This game is really cool. It pauses the music like from the overworld and starts playing it from that same point after you get back from a battle that you just ran into. Very few games do this, and you end up hearing the start of the song a lot. I really, really love the choice they did here, and I wish they would do it more often in video games. I came here to talk to this guy. Cave leads to South Figaro. It's closed due to construction. It's a cave. How are you constructing a cave? Also, they're not actually constructing the cave. There's no evidence that they ever did anything in there. But, uh, can't let you in, yeah. If you look at the Game Boy Advance translation, it's much more accurate than, uh, <laughs> what they've decided to do here. Basically, you're just not allowed in here right now because the plot says so. It's plot wall. But uh, when we we're here um, later on with Edgar, I'm not going to show that off because I'm not going to play for that long just to show the stuff that I missed. But um, what uh, one of the interesting things is in, I think, the original Japanese, they actually included uh, some ad an additional line that said, we're going through the cave to South Figaro and then north to the Returner's Hideout. That's one line that just completely escapes this translation of the game, and even though our goal at this point was to head to the Returner's Hideout as of, you know, the conversation we had between Locke, Terra, and Edgar on the Chocobos, but then when we get here in this translation, they just tell us, oh, let's go to South Figaro, which is through the cave, and then they don't really tell you where to go after that. Anyway. And we're back to where we actually should be. Now, I don't think I was particularly uh, clear on this before, so I'm going to show one battle here to talk about one thing. I'm just going to run away from the fight. But I wanted to point out that if you enter a battle and the orientation of enemies is different, that's called a different battle formation, at least 
I'm not sure if it does in the case of the game, but in terms of people talking about it, that's what they're referring to. When I said I was going to fight uh, three different uh, fights with the Rodox enemies here, I was referring to three different battle formations. Uh, one of them has this group. Uh, I think there's three in the forest and one on the field. Uh, this is one of the ones in the forest. One of the other ones I think has like uh, the wrench throwing enemies as well. Uh, whatever they were called, Grease Monks, I think. But uh, yeah, I've already fought them all. You don't need anything particular about it. Steel? Okay, we all ran away. <laughs> Guess I'd already queued that up. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of make that clear uh, just because I don't think I did in the previous episode. Anyway, this time... We are back and we have our better movement here. So I am going to use my uh, my save states here. I don't need that, uh, that old one anymore. Video game. Are you doing the save state or not? There we go. For some reason in this version of the emulator, it doesn't leave the uh, image of the save state on screen for very long. Uh, so this one contains a tonic. Later on, it will contain a revivify. It's not a huge deal. I'm going to uh, leave leave it just basically to show you that it's something else. Uh, this is a green cherry. Uh, later on, it will be a tent. Interesting note about the green cherry you'll notice here on the right side of the screen. Yellow cherry is how it was translated in the fan translation and in the Google translation. And if you read the uh, the Japanese script up here, it's actually yellow. If you look at the top word there, um, for some reason it got changed to green cherry. I'm not sure why, and it's kind of persisted to this day. Not that imps are very common status effect, which is what this cures. But I guess it makes more sense as green in terms of that being the color of the imp. But it's really weird that the, they changed it at all. It just seems kind of meaningless. Anyway, I'm going to show off uh, all of what these are going to be later. And then over here, we have a soft, which later on will become an elixir. So that's actually pretty decent. Uh, this is an eye drop, which will become a remedy later on. Uh, there is one more item that I'm going to show that I'm not going to pick up right now. And that should be over here. This is also a tonic. Um, this is going to be an X potion later on. Um, oh, and there's one more. Or no, did I already get that one already? Did I already get that one? Okay, there we go. The antidote, yeah. This one will become a tent later on. So I'm going to unload all of these because I don't want to get them now. I want to be able to show things. This is Chocobo Stable, by the way, even though I never went in here. You can rent a Chocobo here if you so desire. Um, another thing, before I forget, cafe. Enter into the cafe. Look over on the right, it says pub. Yes, this is part of the massive amount of censoring in this game. They used to do this to the Final Fantasy games all the time. Uh, they don't tend to do this anymore from my understanding. Um, but then again, you don't, you don't have these high fantasy settings in Final Fantasy games anymore. It's pretty much all turned to other various things. Uh, let's go behind here. This one contains a warp stone. This one will be a Phoenix down later, which for the like for what we'll need out of Phoenix downs doesn't matter at all. And I'm not going to show this one because I actually have a use for the warp stone. The warp stone does probably what you think it does. Same effect as warp. In this particular case, it teleports you out of a dungeon that you're in at the time. And I'm actually going to use that to get a little more dialogue. You definitely don't have to do this. Get out of my way, kid. <sighs> Some people always in the way. I don't know if that's faster than walking outside, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, Is this the right house? It is, okay. I wanted to go over this uh, line, or 
Is it this one? No, it's not. I can't remember who says it. Uh, there was a line somewhere about uh, Vargas, uh, Duncan's son, being um, a little different. Um, in the translation that we got, they were saying that Vargas resented the training that he got. Um, the game I forgot to mention this at the time, but the uh, Game Boy Advance translation covers this a little bit better. Can you please move out of my way? Move! Move! Hate NPCs in the way. It's one of the things about the older games I do not miss. <laughs> Aw, oh, come on! Get out of the way! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway. We can, we can move on from here now. But yeah, there was something that sa said that he resented it. Um, the Game Boy Advance translation makes it uh, so that Duncan wasn't particularly happy with uh, his student's progress, his son's progress, and said that he wasn't making any. Uh, so it's just a different take, and I don't believe I mentioned it at the time. So if we go on up here, there is a solitary house all on its own. A familiar smell. Flowers, his favorite. These dishes were his favorite. Interesting. This is his favorite tea. And this contains a tonic. I don't believe that matters at all. You can steal a rest here, by the way. <laughs> so, free rest, I'll take it. And... I think that's it. And then, once you've examined some of these things, I'm not even sure if you have to, but... Sabin, he was here. Now, if you look at the other translations here, and even the Japanese, we'll scroll up here. Mash was the original name that they gave to Sabin. Don't know why they named him Mash, but they did. Um, Sabin or Sabin, if you want to pronounce it that way, are much more interesting names, if you ask me. Mash is like the name of a comic character or something like that in like a show aimed at like six-year-olds <laughs> and i apologize if anyone actually has that name it just seems really weird from my perspective but there's this guy here now so let's talk to him now the line here that edgar gives is very lame and very lazy. If you look over at the Game Boy Advance translation, do you know where I could find the man who lives here? That is an accurate statement, even if it's not a direct translation. This makes a lot more sense than do you know this guy when this being, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a pronoun to describe something, you know, it's I don't think it's technically a pronoun, but it's used to describe something that's not here and they're not relating it to anything. And it just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Left a couple of days ago after he heard Master Duncan was slain, he headed into the mountains. Heard Duncan's son Vargas is missing as well. A bad feeling about this. More Star Wars references. Thank you, video game. But yeah, you can get the kind of the gist of things from looking at all the different translations here. And then he just pieces on out. Nice. All right. I hope I remember to do all my purchasing last time. Does everybody have all their gear? Looks like we do. Uh, actually, no. Did I? I didn't equip any of it. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. Plumed hat for you. Uh, plumed hat for you. Kung fu suit for you. Uh, plumed hat for you. Cotton robe for you. Did I not get you anything? Maybe there was nothing to get you. Uh, see, we have one mithril shield. 
he can equip the heavy shield. Everyone can equip the heavy shield right now, so it doesn't matter who you give the mithril shield to. There will be points later on where we'll get characters that, for some reason, can't equip the mithril shield, but they can equip the heavy shield. You would think the reason you couldn't equip something is because it's too heavy, yet the characters that can't use mithril shield can equip the heavy shield. Not exactly sure how that works, but if, uh, if you insist. Alright. Now, there's only one other place we can actually explore around here, and that's up here to the right. Eh, sure, we'll fight a battle. Auto crossbow, I win. Whatever. <laughs> Should have stolen, but that's fine. You're still alive? Alright. Now, one other thing I do have here is a list of status effects in this game. And I kind of want to go over it, but I'm going to wait for a specific opportunity uh, when I get inflicted with uh, the darkness status. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take off... Well, these are like, one of the enemies I wanted to deal with when it comes to that. But yeah, these guys have antidotes. Let's... Uh, just nuke them with auto crossbow since that's what we're going to use on in every random battle going forward for the next little bit. Yeah, getting that extra little bit from the hyper wrist just adds that extra little bit of damage. It's not a huge amount. Did I see something up there? Hmm. Uh, nope. Not down there. All right, over here we gotta go down. All right. We have Tuskers. They're similar to the enemies that we fought in the uh, the caves in Narsh at the beginning of the game. Even though, oops, I didn't mean to steal from you, but even though we're still at the very beginning of the game. But they're already recycling sprites. Not that they got a chance to do anything, but they're there. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to remove my star pendants just so that I have the opportunity to demonstrate something. And that'll lead to me talking about uh, how status effects work. Now, here's an interesting fight. The brawler has a rare steel, and I'm actually going to hang around uh, for a little bit here and attempt to basically to steal from one of them until I get something. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but it'd be nice to show. Lock, your steel percentage is reaching Zidane levels. Stop missing. Steal the item, please. Okay, there we go. Um, I probably attempted to steal about seven more times after <laughs> cutting. So, um, yeah, I had to heal. That's how uh, much of a pain in the ass that was. Um, as far as I understand, the bandana, the, 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 the bandana is a rare steel. I believe they do have a common steel. I think it's a tonic. Um, the bandana doesn't make a huge amount of difference, uh, but as you can see, it's a little bit better piece of uh, headgear. Not that it's required, but it's nice to have, I guess. Um, I did not expect it to take that long to steal, but the steal rate early on, not so great. The Guardian, as you can see over on the right side, they have correctly translated this to the main gauche knife, or gotch, gosh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Either way, it's a weapon we've seen in Final Fantasy for many, many years. Uh, Guardian is, I believe, a name they also used in Final Fantasy V for the same knife. Uh, apparently, it's a weird word to translate uh, from the Japanese. Um, or it's Because the main gauche is like a French knife or something, so maybe it's just a, a confusion in uh, terms of the person translating didn't know that it was a French you know, type of weapon or something like that. But anyway, it's the uh, it's the Guardian Knife. It does kind of what you would expect it to do. It raises our physical evade, which is still useless. Yay for useless. Uh, it does raise our speed, though, so we'll equip it anyway, as well as our battle power. Not that that matters. Well, in Locke's case, it kind of does, 
Uh, in fact, I might as well put him in the front row since that way he can do a little more damage. It's not like he's doing... Actually, you know what? He doesn't need to right now. But anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of show that off. Eventually, we will get inflicted with a status effect. I'm not going to try and steal from you guys again because you guys suck. One attempt here. Nope. Pretty much that's how we're going to finish that fight. We'll get one steal attempt with Locke, and that's it from now on. Uh, let's go on up here. Come on. Nope. Yeah, the, uh, the, the amount of enemies we're fighting, not particularly interesting at the moment. It's just a lot of the uh, same dudes over and over again. There is a different uh, group of enemies that can be encountered. There we go. Uh, on the outside, when we're outside on the uh, green, as opposed to when we're inside in the caves. The Atlas Armlets. Um, let's take a quick look at that. Atlas Armlet. Also called Giant's Glove or Gigas Glove in other translations. It boosts your physical attack power. Unfortunately, they don't give you numbers. I got you covered. The amount is 25%. And no, when you get a second one, you cannot stack that effect. At least not with the Atlas Armament. Now, the reason why I gave that to uh, Edgar is because it increases his physical damage output. It's a separate ability that doesn't involve his battle power or his Viger stat. It's like a separate calculation. It increases physical damage by 25% raw. And the reason why this is so good is because it applies to auto crossbow, meaning his damage just went up by 25%. And he's still hitting all enemies. Hello, who are you? All right, new enemies. I'm going to let these guys uh, hang around here for a quick moment here because they can do interest interesting things. Bane Touch. Inflicts the poison status. That's all I wanted. And they're gone. Now, the interesting thing about status effects in this game, you'll take one damage per, per step from poison. 53. Okay, maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's 10 per step. I can't remember. Now, I could use an antidote to cure that. However, I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to go into here and select the star pendant to make me immune to uh, poison. And the status effect is now gone even if you remove it. It's a free way of healing your status effects uh, that you don't need to, you know, buy anything special for. Like, if, as long as you already have things like star pendants. Now, I'm going to spend a short little bit here going over kind of all the status effects in this game, because there's a lot of status effects in this game. And, well, in order to, you don't really need to understand them in order to understand the game, sadly enough. But uh, I'm going to do that in post commentary as we uh, traverse through here so that I'm not looking over and not accomplishing anything. Here's a tent. Starting with the darkness status, which, be due to the same bug that prevents evade from working, does absolutely nothing. Zombie, the character is uncontrollable and attacks randomly. Also doesn't die at zero HP, so it's kind of like a confusion thing as well as being zombie. Poison, interestingly enough, increases damage done each round for eight rounds, then levels off at that value and continues to deal that amount of damage. So poison's actually kind of dangerous in this game. The clear status. Physical attacks will always miss. Magical attacks will always hit. This can be exploited to no end, and I will indeed show you how. Imp status can only use fight, item, and the imp spell, nothing else. No special commands, no stealing, no anything else. Petrify cannot act, HP is reduced to zero, but the character isn't technically dead. Enemies will die when inflicted with it, though. 
Condemned. A countdown will kill the character when it reaches zero. So this is the countdown status from Final Fantasy VII. Death sentence, whatever it was. I count no countdown from Final Fantasy V. Death sentence from Final Fantasy VII. You understand how it works. Near fatal means below an eighth of your maximum HP. This is also the time when we can use desperation attacks. When we activate a normal attack, we have a small chance of using basically a limit break when in this uh, situation. Though when you're that low on HP, you usually don't want to use normal attacks, nor any time ever, because this is Final Fantasy VI. Image, all physical attacks miss. Each uh, hit has a one quarter chance to uh, remove the image. So it's basically like image from Final Fantasy IV with Edge, where, uh, and Final Fantasy V in fact, with I think that was the ninja's ability, but you put the status effect in place, it shows a couple of images and they take the uh, hit in place of your character. Though in this situation, they don't always get removed after absorbing a hit, kind of weird. Uh, mute, cannot cast any type of spell. Um, there's both normal magic and other types of magic that we'll get access to later on. Berserk, character attacks randomly and has their physical damage increased by 1.5. I went over that aspect of it earlier on when we went over basic damage calculation. Muddle, characters act randomly and targets attack spells and physical attacks and the like on allies and healing effects on enemies. Um, will not use items, throw, slot, leap, control, defend, revert, possess, or summon. Seizure is basically another form of poison, but the damage doesn't increase and you cannot protect against it with poison immunity. As far as I know, I don't think there's any way of protecting against it, save for maybe one item, and that's through a glitch. This game has a lot of those, by the way. Regen, slow, haste, float, and stop all do exactly what you think they do. Uh, regen and seizure, oddly enough, and uh, slow and haste are both opposites and casting one on a target that is inflicted with the other one. So if you cast haste on something with slow on it, it will cancel the first status out. However, if the character has a permanent haste effect like the running shoes, then, uh, or in the case of regen, something like that as well, they will then be immune to the opposite effect. So running shoes means you're immune to slow. I've heard that it makes you immune to stop, but I haven't been able to verify that. Uh, and then something that gives you auto regen will make you immune to seizure. Sleep does exactly what you think it does as well. Nap time. Freeze is a somewhat rare status effect in the Final Fantasy universe. I think it's here and maybe five, definitely nine. But anyway, almost the same thing as stop, but both can be inflicted at the same time and freeze will pause the stop, uh, the timer for stop when it's in effect. So you can stack them on top of each other and it makes it worse. So be very careful around these effects. Shell and safe reduce damage taken from magical and physical attacks respectively. Uh, normal damage has a variance of basically between 100% full damage, you know, the most it can do, and as little as 87.5%. Uh, it's, it's kind of a weird variance the way they've described it in the, uh, the algorithms guide, but that's basically how it works. These spells reduce this variance to approximately 66%. Uh, so basically, instead of taking between 87.5% damage and 100% damage, you'll take about 66% damage. So it reduces typical damage by a third. I just wanted to throw the extra bit of information in there in case anyone was wondering. Reflect. Spells reflected deal 50% of normal damage. Spells that go through Reflect are Life, Remedy, Antidote, Osmos, Drain, Dispel, Warp, Float, Banish, X zone, quarter, and demi. Now, because of this 50% uh, reduction in damage, uh, it can, it's kind of weird how effective it is to bounce spells off yourself onto the enemy, and it usually doesn't deal any additional damage, even with a full party. 
Uh, so it's kind of a weird situation. I think there's only a couple situations where we're going to want to make use of that, but there are situations where uh, Reflect is a valuable thing to have. And finally, the hide status. Whenever a character is off screen for any reason, uh, such as like using the jump command or uh, another skill that we'll see later on called sneeze, um, they are susceptible. They're basically in the hide status. It's not a very common thing. It's not something you can directly inflict other than using other skills that put you in that status effect temporarily uh, before finishing the effect. And that's pretty much all I wanted to go over. As you can see, we've uh, arrived here basically at the end of the area. And there is this guy who is now waiting for us. So that's pretty much all the time we have for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.